we had a juicy rumor that seems fairly legit that we wanted to cover. This is a rumor that Hasbro is seeking to sell the Dungeons and Dragons brand to Tencent. So uh, we're referencing here an article from Pandaily. Supposedly, this was something that was brought about oddly by the success of Baldur's Gate 3. So Larian Studios, the developers of Baldur's Gate 3, were able to do something that I think Hasbro had never been able to do with any of their first-party game development efforts, which is world-dominating video game with the D&D brand in it since their acquisition of that brand. And I'm not surprised, Larian has a significant investment from Tencent. Mm -hmm. So the story goes that supposedly with the success of Baldur's Gate 3, Larian had a real interest in potentially acquiring the brand by some means, but they're not of the size uh, and financial status to be able to do so. So they basically approached Tencent, according to this article, and asked Tencent if they would consider acquiring the brand. So there's a lot to unpack here. One thing, we haven't gotten Hasbro's earnings for Q1 2024, but their last couple have been pretty dismal. And we've been talking about ongoing layoffs, like Hasbro was one of the bigger layoffs of recent period. So I think they have been cutting costs left and right, looking for revenue. I think this might be a case of like killing the golden goose. They have one segment within Hasbro that's really profitable, which is Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast has two major IPs, Dungeons, Dragons, and Magic. Historically, Wizard has said in their earnings calls, we are under monetizing Dungeons and Dragons. A goal of ours is to better monetize that player base, which the players love to hear, by the way. So this is essentially them, I think, admitting we haven't figured out how to monetize D&D. And so we're going to ring the register and see if we can just leverage this and bag some cash while we're bleeding and sell off the brand. So there's a lot to unpack here. Um, I have thoughts, but Xander, what do you think about this rumor? So we'll see how this bakes out. I think that my reading of the article was they're like selling off long-term IP rights to the digital license. So that was my understanding of how I read this. And, you know, I think that makes sense in regards to Hasbro, just because Hasbro is not a digital company. I mean, like you have to think about what what a core area is a competency. Hasbro accidentally like stumbled upon two of the most valuable digital IPs ever in Wizards of the Coast, which are as you said, Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering. And they both are now have wildly successful digital products. But Hasbro is a toy company, right? It's like they they make pieces of plastic. <laughs> That's what they're good at. So it's not crazy that they would outsource this. But my question is like, what's the long-term sustainable path for Hasbro? It's like, that's not a company I want to be buying stock in anytime soon. There's a digital core of excellence at that company. I mean, maybe somewhere buried deep in the Wizards of the Coast organization, but that's not where I'm placing my bets. Yeah, there was news last year of them shutting down some of their upstart game development initiatives at Hasbro as well. And yeah, I think they're just really proving that they haven't figured out how to conquer digital. I understand why they're selling the brand. It's kind of sad. I mean, but at the same time, I think knowing that Larian is a driving force behind this is a reason for some optimism. Anyone who's ever worked on an IP-based game with a big licensor before knows that there's a lot of extra hurdles and huge amount of margin that you have to give from your game revenue in order to do that. And Larian has proved, even working within those constraints, they can absolutely crush it. And so I'm cautiously optimistic for this. I think in some ways that Larian might be better caretakers of the brand, as long as they have enough autonomy to do their thing right. um, under with Tencent if they become the official holder of the IP. But I actually kind of like this deal, as, as sad as it is to see the brand leave potentially Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, we've witnessed Hasbro be a mediocre shepherd of some beloved brands. So maybe it's better living somewhere else. I hope Larian, who is a studio that I absolutely love, gets a lot of say in it. That being said, I'm always a little bit skeptical of selling off beloved American brands to overseas corporations. We'll see. Does Tencent have a good track record of shepherding historic American brands? Like, I can't think of any. But I well, what could be one. what could be wild? One thing I'm just thinking about now is where Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro's expertise actually lies, which is with more physical products, traditional board gaming, tabletop RPG. We might be entering an era where, at least in the interim, Wizards and Hasbro are licensing D&D from Tencent because like, the dominant use case for the brand could become this new era of digital games driven by Larian and other developers in the Tencent family. But Tencent doesn't have a center of excellence around paper gaming, board gaming, perhaps basically the, we just switch and now Wizards is sub-licensing that from Tencent. It's going to be really interesting to watch. 
We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a new era for D&D. Don't mess it up. I just want more of those D&D movies. Did you see it? <laughs> they were not. I did not. <laughs> they were not very good. Awesome. That's a wrap. Lots to cover. Caught all over the place, but I hope you enjoyed it. Warren, take us out. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. As always, the podcast was brought to you by our team here at Uptick. At Uptick, we do all things to help games grow. That includes the user acquisition and creative and analytics work around that. But we also have a really awesome set of software that we use ourselves. It's been a big part of our kind of secret to success. And in the last year, we started opening that up and licensing it to other in-house teams. So your team can use the same tools that we've used here to drive close to 100,000 players a day into the games we support in very profitable, sustainable ways. So if you're a team building a game and looking to increase the efficacy of your user acquisition process, come chat with us. We're happy to see how we can help. You can reach us at uptick.com. That's U-P-P-T-I-C.com. Talk soon. Talk soon.